So I've been working long and hard in Unity and I have not yet saved the scene that I'm working on. I have a project folder that I established when I first started working in Unity, but I have not yet saved the progress uh, that I've completed on this scene. And so I want to go to the File menu and choose to Save Scene As. And I'll save this as Scene 01, so it's my first scene. Um, I could use whatever naming convention I want. For the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to use Scene 01, 02, 03, um, just to demonstrate the concept of having more than one scene. Now. I've just saved my first scene and you can see that that is inside the assets folder. We want to we want to keep those assets in their default location inside the asset folder. And if I were to make some kind of modification or I wanted to create a new scene based on this existing scene, one strategy would be to um I'll just modify my my water here a little bit to show a change in scene. Uh I could start with an existing scene and then do a quick file save as and I'll save this as scene 02. Again, I'm letting that default inside my assets folder, and that is inside my project folder. And I'll save. And so now inside the project folder, when I have my assets folder selected, I can see two different scenes. Uh, if I want to load one of these scenes, I can just double click, and that will load uh, the version of the scene that I've selected. So again, I'm just going to jump into my project folder really quickly and take a look at what we've created so far. I'm going to go into my class folder, into my project folder. And this is the project folder that Unity created when we launched and established our new project. Now, we can ignore the temp folder, we can ignore the project setting, and we can ignore the library. The assets folder is the important thing that we want to focus on here. The assets folder is in the search path of Unity for this project. So pretty much anything that we put inside the assets folder will be available to Unity. Uh, or, or specifically to this project. And so that goes for things like uh, if we build some textures in Photoshop or we build some graphics that we want to integrate, we want to keep things organized inside the assets folder. And you can see that the scenes that we created are inside this assets folder. So anything that we create uh, or want to use inside this project, it needs to end up inside the assets folder for this project. So I'll just jump back to Unity and uh, I want to introduce some some simple lights into the equation which I've done I've created some simple water and at this point I have almost enough information to actually run uh, this scenario or this simulation and uh, I want to draw your attention to the top of the scene panel just above the scene panel we have these little these, these little simulation controls and if I hit the play button what's gonna happen is we end up looking through our main camera there's not a whole lot happening here. Um, you know, we're kind of stuck. There's no interactivity. We can barely even see the landscape that we created. The only thing that I can see happening is some wave ripples from the water that we've established. I'm going to toggle the play button off. So I, I, I hit the play button to run the simulation, and by default, what's happening is we're looking through our main camera. If I select my main camera and just kind of recompose this shot a little bit, I'll move it up, and I'm just kind of paying attention to... I'm paying attention to what I see in this window here. I'm just recomposing this. I'll, uh, I don't want to scale. That was the wrong field. I want to rotate. Yeah, I'll just recompose this window. This time when I hit play, uh, I'm looking at a different view. Okay, so by default, I'm looking through this default camera. I'm going to get rid of this camera in just a minute, but I, I want to I point out a, a very important workflow inside Unity. And that is once we start toggling on the play our game or play simulation, a couple things are happening. When we hit play, I want to point out that the scene tab, we end up running in the game tab. So we're actually looking at our active game, our real-time game, and, and there's not much happening. There's, in fact, there's nothing happening at this point. Uh, but if we want to make a change to this environment at this point, uh, we need to not pause our simulation, we need to turn off the simulation. It's really important that we toggle the play button on and off, uh, and we can also use the quick key combination of holding down the command and pressing the P key, and that's the method that I'm going to start using. Command P uh, to toggle play on and off. If I am turn the play button on, you'll find that in the near future we have the ability to start controlling components, adding things to our scene, if we do that while we're running the simulation, all the changes that we make while this, the simulation is running are going to disappear when we turn the play button off. 
So in other words, if I have the play button on and I go to create game object and I create a cube, I have a cube in the equation. I can't see it right now. I lose the, the ability to control panning around the scene because I'm stuck inside my camera. Uh, but I have this cube inside the environment. Well, the minute that I turn off the simulation, I toggle the play button, you can see that that cube disappeared. Okay, and the same thing is true uh, if I have a component selected or I have an object selected and I hit play and I modify the component in some way, maybe I adjust the color of my light, uh, the moment I toggle that play button off, that component, whatever I modified, defaults back to the state that it was in before I hit the play button. Okay, so it's really important that uh, when we play our simulation and we look in the game view, we're running our simulation, when we're done, we don't just change tabs, we don't hit the pause button, we actually toggle that play button off. It's a very important concept. The next thing that I want to do is introduce a first person camera. And I, at this point, I don't want competing cameras inside my scene. So I'm going to select the main camera, and I'm going to delete it, delete it. And I can do that two ways. I can right-click or control-click on the main camera, and I can choose to delete. Or I can select that camera and hold down the Command key and hit the Delete key on the keyboard. Once I do that, I want to introduce a standard asset. So I'm going to go to my Project folder, into my Assets folder, into Standard Assets. I'm going to reveal the hierarchy of the standard assets folder and I'm looking for character controllers and inside character controllers when I have that folder selected I have two options I have a third person controller or a first person controller I'm going to choose to drag and drop the first person controller into the equation okay now I'm going to look at this really quickly and just try to orient my first person controller so that it's not too far up in the sky I'll make sure that I'm looking from a top-down view and make sure that I'm actually over some land. And I'll exaggerate this just a little bit from the side view here. So I'm, my first-person controller is way up in the air right now, but it's over land. And so now, with the first-person controller inside the environment and with no other competing cameras, we should be able to hit the play button. And once we do, our camera is now dynamic. And what we can do is we can use the mouse to look around our environment. So it's a mouse look. And we can use the arrow keys in the keyboard to move forward, backwards, or strafe left and right. We could also use the W key, the S key to move forward and back, or the A and D key to move left, to, to strafe left and right, to sidestep left and right. We can also use the space bar uh, to jump. So by default, this is the capability that the first person controller gives to our environment and we can start to walk our environment or our island. Uh, and at this point, we might discover that um, we're moving pretty slow, and that's okay. Um, we don't want to dramatically modify the speed of this first-person camera or the size and the shape of it, because as I mentioned before, um, the, the scale of our environment becomes very important here. And so if we're moving too slowly around this island or this environment and it feels like we're, we're just really kind of creeping along, that's a pretty good indicator that our the scale of our island might be too big. Or if it's moving too fast under our feet, that might be a good indicator that our island is too small. We'll experiment with those concepts later when we start in Project 2 and when we start playing around with some basic physics inside our environment. Uh, but at this point, I just want to reinforce this notion of creating a simple environment, starting to experiment with textures and lighting, uh, and introduce your first first person controller. Have fun with this, play around with it, we'll catch up in the next presentation after you had some time to explore the environment that you created.